Hey guys, I'm Elena and I'm attending a wedding in Delhi, India. This is not my first Indian wedding, but what I know, every wedding is a little bit different depending on where the groom and the bride are from. So I'm gonna tell you about a more typical North Indian wedding and I hope you enjoy the whole journey. This wedding, like many Indian weddings, is not a one-day affair, but a two-day affair. Typical wedding is usually around two, three days because there are so, so, so many ceremonies and rituals that you have to attend. But first, we had to buy some outfits. I was pretty lucky in that department because I already owned a very beautiful salwar kameez from way back when. A salwar kameez is a traditional outfit and um, it has this very voluminous large pants, which is the salwar, and kameez is this beautiful tunic over the top. Usually you also wear it with some sort of scarf like I did here. For Eugene, it was a more interesting story. It was his first Indian wedding, so we had to buy all the outfits for him. Uh, again, for um, uh, shopping, we went to Fab India, which was one of my favorite stores. They have such beautiful, vibrant designs, very good quality uh, of fabric, very good service, and fixed prices. Uh, the male outfit is really very simple, so if you are a uh, a foreigner attending a wedding and are curious about what to buy. Uh, the outfit is comprised of this uh, skinny pant usually called uh, churidar which comes in uh, a light color, a white, a beige, uh, a navy color and on top of that you have this uh, beautiful tunic. Um, the color uh, scheme of the first function was um, yellow and golden tones so we had a look at this two kurtas and went for the second one you can see that the quality is amazing and on top of that uh, Eugene wanted to try out a jacket this is called a narrow jacket because it was made popular in the 50s and 60s by the Prime Minister of India at that time Jawaharlal Nehru uh, but we decided against it because it was really hot outside The rituals that we are going to participate in today are Mendy and Sankit. Mendy is the beautiful drawings that they do in a henna only on women's hand and this is considered to be auspicious, so a good sign. Uh, just in time for all the women to have beautiful henna tattoos for the wedding. And the second part is Sangeet, which is a party where the groom and the bride's families come together to prepare dances and songs to cheer up the crowd. to check out the buffet and they are just starting things out so only a couple of dishes are prepared so there was this nice server who uh, gave us some uh, paneer I think and mint sauce and we are starving so I'm going to taste that mm. really good this is Pani Puri one uh, snack that I never tasted because it's always in the market and they use sometimes tap water for that so you can never be too safe uh, so I'm really curious to taste this uh, they have three fillings the spicy one the sweet one and another kind of spice I will start with the first one This one is with cumin. Really, like a little bit of spicy, but very refreshing. Mm. Very good.
I just got my Mandy done. Look at this beauty. And now, since I still want to have some food, and we got this amazing platter from the buffet, Eugene, my husband, is going to feed me. That's why you need husbands at weddings. This was a Bengali Kashmir wedding. Uh, the groom was from Kashmir and during this function we have observed a lot of Kashmiri traditions I was not really aware in the past. For example, this performer who uh, dances and sings right now, he is one that performs both male and female parts, which is pretty unusual for me and for the majority of guests at the wedding. Next day we went for some wedding shopping for the final function and we went to Manya Barmohe which is a really nice shop for Indian fashion. As you can see by the selection they have all this vibrant colors and designs for the bride, the groom and even the guests, a more formal clothing I would say. So uh, Eugene tried on a couple of kurtas here. As you can see, the first one was a little bit see-through, very beautiful pattern, but you can see like the skin underneath, so he didn't really like that. The second one was very nice with golden thread, a little bit shiny for Eugene's taste, and it was a bit prickly because this was a raw silk material, and it had this tendency to irritate his skin, so he was not a big fan. And then lastly, we saw this beautiful pattern, um, beautiful fabric, cotton silk, which was really soft on the skin and looked also like very uh, nice and reserved. Eugene already had shoes, uh, traditional duties that men wear at the wedding, but he really wanted to try more a more modern twist on the traditional uh, shoes. We didn't end up buying those because we already had a pair of shoes for him. As for me, I bought my first ever sari. I've been to a lot of weddings, but actually never wore a sari, and I was a little bit scared because I didn't know how to fold it. So there were guests at the wedding who actually helped me fold the sari on the spot. For those of you who don't know, um, a sari is really comprised of this uh, skirt, a petticoat, a blouse that you wear on top and then this fabric is just just like plain fabric that you wrap around yourself and this is all a sari is um, for the petticoat and for the blouse usually they are ordered somewhere separate in this case I also bought them from the store and they had it um, uh, tailored to my uh, actual size they did it I think um, during a day so this is really really fast but traditionally people wait for a couple of months to get the blouse and the petticoat sewn for them um, as you can see uh, I just you know tried the ready-made ones that were in the store so uh, yeah <laughs> it looks a bit different it's finally the wedding wedding day I just put my sari it looks splendid and uh, 10 a.m. the religious wedding was supposed to start but uh, so far I'm seeing that people are only gathering up so according to best Indian etiquette usually the functions start a little bit later the dress code was pastel colors, uh, light pink, blush, ivory and I went for this beautiful color that matches with my husband's outfit so the most beautiful part of the sari is called a pala and that is what you expose to the public, so it's the outer, outer part of your outfit. Uh, I'm wearing it on the hand because it was a little bit dusty, but um, normally you would wear it like this, hanging from the back of your outfit. And then it's nicely folded, and actually there are so many ways of folding a sari. Uh, the type that I'm wearing right now is the traditional North Indian style where the whole body is covered. So if you take it up, you can see that I have the beautiful folds here. I have a blouse that covers almost all of my midsection. It's really beautifully ornated. 
and I'm going to cover it with the sari. It's all about the pleats because what a sari really is is just a long piece of fabric and you fold it in ways that creates this like volume and uh, tightness around the hips and your body. One of the first things that happens in the wedding is the barat, which is the groom and the groom's side of the family coming to take the uh, bride. And usually barat is on a white horse, but now it's a more modern twist and the groom is in a very flashy car. I left my Delhi Valley girlfriend, like well, I left my girlfriend from Delhi for you. So we do have to wear something in the neck as well as like uh, completely the arms open. So this is called lehenga choli and this work is called zardozi uh -huh. with stones. Uh -huh. Okay. This is a dupatka. So choli is made up of velvet. The, uh -huh. uh, the cloth is called velvet uh -huh. with again the work of zardozi uh -huh. and stones. Uh -huh. And uh, these small things, this is called a latkan. <laughs> Uh -huh. You stick this to the dupatta. Oh, okay. This is called a mang tikka. Uh -huh. And the, this is called damini. Mm -hmm. This is all stone work, like stone studded. This is called a garara. It's a divided skirt, like a pant, but a loser pant. And then there's a dupatta with it. So this is, this is a bigger dupatta because it goes around my body. It's called a dushala. Uh, red is also a symbol of a uh, symbol of a married woman here in India. Uh, other than that, it kind of the bindi is supposed to enhance the mood. Thank you. 